Chainsaw Man by Tatsuti Fujimoto is frankly a work of art, being a manga of immense depth and rotting prowess that fills the void of lackluster, pointless manga that is all too common in the modern day. For this video, I'd like to take one aspect of this writing and focus on it, as Chainsaw Man's foreshadowing and symbolism is something that needs to be praised. Its world building is measuring class and would make an LA teacher proud. So, in today's video, I will delve deeper into one part of the story's lore, Aki and his wife. <laughs> Before I continue, here is a spoiler warning. If you haven't read the manga up to the Gun Devil arc, I highly suggest you go read it before continuing. So, Aki's lifespan is a huge part of his character and conflict in the story, with it being an overshadowing problem of his, the fact that he knows it is inevitable that he will die soon, and that through his actions and attempts, he speeds up his demise. This complex relationship with his inevitability of death, and how it is a consequence of his actions, is the focus of this video. As I believe that Aki's lifespan is not a theoretical concept, as in when it runs out he will suddenly drop dead, but is instead the point where his current life path will come to an end based off the decisions he is making. So to clarify, that each time his lifespan was decreased, it was due to the future that resulted from the decisions he made, which made him die sooner and sooner. We can see this first during the Sword Demon, a conflict where his team was completely outclassed and barely holding the attackers back until Makima retaliated. This fight is the first time we see him use the curse now, a sword which is apparently set to decrease his lifespan each time he uses it. Before using the nail, the fight was not going their way. However, they were able to hold back the enemies, and considering that is all they really needed to do, hold the enemies back until Makima was able to act, if Aki hadn't used the sword, then I don't think it's far-fetched to believe that they would have just captured Denji and left him and Himeno hurt, but alive. It may be a jump in logic, but I'd like to clarify, I don't think Aki made the wrong choice in using the nail, as I doubt he had any clue about just how powerful Makimo was. However, following the usage of the curse nail, the fight quickly changed its tone, as the sword devil suddenly began to take the fight seriously, being able to quickly dispatch Aki and leaving him with a huge wound that took him completely out of the fight. Him being removed from the fight forced Himeno to act in order to save the team, where she sacrifices herself just to try and fight back. Following this fight, Aki learns he only has a couple months left to live after using his sword as much as he did. So with the fight established, let's consider why Aki's lifespan decreased. First, we have the clear suspect of his wound. Of course, his lifespan has been dramatically reduced after a wound like that. However, we should also look at Himeno's death. Himeno was in some way a representation of the future for Aki. With her, he made a friend and found happiness beyond just his quest for revenge. However, she dies chiefly because he was completely unable to fight following his wound, which I'll remind you only occurred because the sword took him seriously as soon as he began to use the cursed blade. Her death clarifies Aki's goal. He doesn't really have an option to try and leave the relaxed peaceful life, and is instead doomed to try and follow this path and slay the gun demon, a path that is doomed to result in his death, thus why his lifespan is now only a few months. Following this, Aki needs to get more powerful, and his decision to try and do so is by making a contact with the Future Demon. The Future Demon is a huge example of the inevitability that follows Aki, for the Future Demon can glance into the future and see the inevitable death that he is marching towards. This demon grants Aki the chance to see into the future and also see slight glances of the future, portraying the future as something which Aki is just a witness to, unable to truly change it by this point in time. Thus, the inevitability of the future and the inevitability of his death are put before him, and there's nothing he can do to change such a future. There's another character in Chainsaw Man with heavy connections to inevitability, and that is Angel. Angel holds the power to reduce someone's lifespan upon contact, draining their lifespans from them. They're also the one who created the sword which Aki uses. So clearly, they are connected to this concept of the inevitability of death, but much like Aki, their inevitability they bring is a consequence of their own actions. We can see this articulated in Angel's own tragic backstory. To review it quickly here, long before the events of the story, Angel fell in love with someone in their village. Angel's love interest lived peacefully alongside them for a while without Angel stealing any of their life. However, one day Makima arrived and forced Angel to take everyone in the village's lifespans. While taking the lifespans, Angel was unconscious, but it can be viewed that this draining of the lifespans here is in part due to the closest they are to Makima, 
In this instant, we don't know how they died, as Angel was unconscious. I don't think it's a stress to say that after Makima got the most out of them they could, they dispatched whatever remained. Seeing as if they were still alive afterwards, they would likely convince Angel to turn against Makima, something which she couldn't allow. However, that is really quite in the realm of theoreticals. What is not is Angel and Octi's interactions. The two of them were put on a team together, and they begin to train and get along with each other. Both of them being people haunted by this inevitability creates a point in which they hold tension and disagreement initially, before through the conference of each other they find more clarity and hope to try and surmount this inevitability, which they tragically ultimately fail to do. However, there is one point where the relationship greatly changes. This occurs during the fight against Bomb and Typhoon, where Angel is about to be blown away. However, Aki refuses to let them, and grabs them. At first, just their sleeve, but finally grabbing their hand and bringing them closer. Is this moment where their friendship truly begins to develop due to the caring nature that Aki shows towards Angel, regardless what consequences it may have towards him? And then it is no coincidence that following this interaction, Aki lost two months of his lifespan, as by hugging Angel in the scene, Aki established a friendship which ultimately resulted in his demise. As later, when Aki is approaching his death, it is Angel who he turns to to help and explain and prevent the future demon's vision which Angel tragically then leads him to Makima, where he makes the pact that ultimately results in his final tragedy. For it is doubtful he would have went to Makima without Angel's guidance, and in turn it is likely that he would have remained alive a little bit longer, remaining outside of Makima's scheme for a little bit longer. So to conclude, it is the actions that Aki takes that ultimately leads to the inevitability of his own demise, or at least I believe so. I think it just shows just how well written this story is, that it's even a question on whether or not something as simple as a little nuance on how someone's lifespan and ability works can be possibly explained as just a result of their own actions and inevitability and, you know, commentary on what it means to be inevitable. But that's all I really got for you guys today. This has been Christopher Beast. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm excited to see Chainsaw Man Part 2 and the anime drop in the upcoming months. So until then, this has been Chris Reese, and I'll see you all next time.